Hey guys, it's Kate. I hope you're having a great day. I have a special video today and I got some of these Marie's Masters watercolors from Jerry's Artorama online and I'm not sure where else, else they're sold. I think they're kind of hard to find but they are Chinese watercolors and they are um, professional watercolors. So I have the box and I did a close-up on the pigments and everything but they are rated um, minimum three but also four stars for the light fastness which I think four stars is permanent and of the 12 colors in my set only three of them are three stars and that's the white the lemon yellow and the cadmium red hue and so I wanted to do a swatch with these and a couple of paintings so you can see how they are and actually this is my first um, professional grade watercolor set that's actually really reasonably priced too and I wanted to try them out and see what they're like so what I did was I actually got the set several weeks ago and I squirted some of the tube paint out into the pans there. So I got a new palette with some pans. I've got I've got plenty of empty ones in case I want to expand. But I got the basic 12 color set. And I am swatching them out now. I did let them cure for several weeks. So they did dry. And then I re-wet them and activated them to do this test. And... As you can see there, and I'll do a close-up with it wet and also later dry, but the colors were just beautiful. Now, I am just learning about pigments, so um, I don't have a ton of knowledge there, but I can share that of the 12 colors, nine of them are single pigment colors. The only three that aren't single pigment are sap green, burnt sienna and burnt umber. I was also reading some comments on um, some of the other pigment information and that possibly some of these should be labeled a hue and um, I guess that's because the normal pigment that's used to make that color wasn't used for these but that is the extent of my knowledge so you might want to do some more research um, if the pigment name is important to you. But for my purposes, I just wanted some watercolors that worked really nicely, that have a really nice color on the page, that spread nice, and that would be sort of that next level up for me to use and try and start to get used to. So I have to say I really, really enjoyed using these. And I did a couple of paintings, which you'll see, but first I'm doing a few tests. So I have my swatches kind of there on the screen. And so what I did next is I took my watercolor paper and I did just a couple of blends. So in this shot here, I'm actually going through my colors. I'm putting them uh, mostly full strength on the page and then um, letting them touch together to see how they kind of flow, if there's a lot of movement, if they have nice blending on the page. I'm working with B watercolor paper. It's 140 pound cotton paper. There are better papers out there, but this is what I usually use for my videos, so it's what I used for my testing. And so I'm going through, getting through all the colors in my palette, which is the basic 12 color set. And that includes the white, lemon yellow, cadmium red hue, alizarin crimson, sap green, viridian, ultramarine, prussian blue, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and ivory black. And so after I go through all the paints, another thing I wanted to do was see how it looked when you drop color into another wet color. So I didn't have a ton of room left on the paper, so I did um, six circles of different colors and then dropped in some colors into those circles. And I really wanted to see how it would dry. 
One thing I did not do in my swatches, which I actually meant to, and I forgot to put a black line through to test um, opacity. So unfortunately, I don't have that today, but um, I think for the most part, they seemed pretty transparent. And I'll also do a close up after everything dries so you can see the finishing on the paper too. For being someone who um, has used a couple of specific paints that were professional quality. I've never actually had a set. And so this is my level up and I really, really enjoyed just playing around with these. And I think the color is so rich and vibrant. And, um, at the time I bought this, I think that set of 12, Gosh, I don't even, I, I'm not sure what I paid it, but I think if you buy the tubes on Jerry's, they're usually on sale for $3.99, but you can get them for $2.99. Um, I'm kind of waiting for them to go on sale again so I could pick up a few more tubes of colors that look interesting. But you can see the color drops in nicely, and as it dries, it spreads out a little bit more. I think the one color that seemed to be a little bit hard to get to be full strength is that ivory black. It just kind of had a gray look, but when I went in for a second dip, it, it definitely helped with the um, concentration of the pigment. So now I'm going to do two paintings quickly just to give you an idea of how they go in real life. <laughs> so I sped this up to two times speed so that it goes by a little faster, but you can see me doing the painting and I try to use as many colors as I can. So in my first painting, I'm doing a pot of lavender and I'm doing some just different things, putting in, dropping in color, dropping in more than one color, and um, just seeing how it dries, how, how vibrant it is when it dries. And on my first painting, I'm not doing a lot of layering. I'm dropping in some different colors and stuff, but um, on my second painting is where I add more layers. I just wanted to get a good idea of how it looked both ways. And I'm just going fast here and you can see that that ultramarine I just love that that color it's really nice and it just is magical when you put it down on the paper now I was going kind of fast anyway on my painting so you'll see here I actually put my pot shadow on the wrong side so <laughs> I've got a kind of funky light source going on but Let's just slide past that, shall we? <laughs> so I'm just putting in kind of a light uh, yellow ochre wash in the background. And then I'm going to go in with the leaves finished up a little bit. Add some more um, strokes there. It's dry in some areas mostly, so I'm just adding some loose stems and I'm keeping both of these paintings really loose. But I think overall it gave a good impression of the colors and I dipped into pretty much all of them for these two paintings. So hopefully this is helpful to give you an idea of how it actually works.
I'm just putting on some finishing touches here and we'll call that painting done and I'll put it aside to dry and start on the next one. I was in the mood to paint some flowers today so <laughs> I did lavender and then I ended up doing another painting with some uh, flowers almost like a, a garden with a little brick wall. And I really liked how both turned out. If it wasn't for the one bad shadow, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> it's funny because I didn't even notice it until I was getting ready to edit my videos. <laughs> but that's what you get when you don't pay attention. So I'm going in with my bricks and just sort of randomly placing them. I'm like I said I'm going pretty quickly with the painting and so I'm not, you know, I want I want bricks but not mason bricks like straight in a row. <laughs> kind of more like a cobblestone wall or something. I don't know if that's the right word, but I'm sure you understand what I mean. So this painting, I do go in um, a couple, two or three different layers and I let it dry between um, layers too to add some more depth to the color, see how dark I can get my shadow areas. So uh, you'll see that as it kind of develops through this video. And hopefully the labels I put when I pull the colors are helpful. One thing I'll say is I really love how easy it was to pull the paint and it's so bright on the page. I didn't need a ton of paint for it to darken up nicely and it just had a really nice flow and feeling to it. And you know, this is coming from somebody who does not have a lot of experience with professional grade paints. And I'm sure these aren't the best paints on the market, but it it really is a noticeable difference in just the feel and the look. I still love my other palettes, but this was really a pleasure to work with. And really, they all are. They all have different pros going for them, but I was really pleased with this, and I'm glad that I got something to try that was a little bit better than what I have bought in the past. So I'm dropping in some flowers and the green paint and the, some of the bricks underneath are still a little bit moist. Um, and that, you know, I'm not worried about that. I'm staying pretty loose and then I'm going to come back in and add some more color once it dries. But I like that spread and the kind of dreamy look it's getting. <laughs> I definitely wanted to get that variety of greens in there 
and uh, start working on some of the shadows and adding some details. So I'm just sort of working my way around the painting. So as one area starts to dry a bit, I'll go back to it and add in some more color. And then once the whole paper is pretty well moist, I actually take a, a short break and let it dry completely before adding more, but I'm not quite there yet. And so my bricks in the center have pretty much dried, so I'm putting a light layer of that yellow ochre over it to give it some more color around the bricks. And I'm going in and uh, mixing that lemon yellow with the cadmium red or gosh was yeah I think it was the cadmium red hue and mixing that together to add to my yellow flower area And the colors deepen up really nicely. They dry nicely on the page. Once this is, everything's done and dry, I will do close-ups on everything so you can see. So we're starting to get a bit into the home stretch. And I'm still going into these colors. Some of my favorites, I really love the intensity of that lemon yellow. It just has a beautiful color. The alizarin crimson is another good one. But really, I always love watercolor reds and oranges. They're always so strong and vibrant. And this one is no exception. Um, and that Prussian blue is really nice too. And I was looking at my dried swatches and that Prussian blue is just super rich and saturated. And I imagine if I had put the black mark on my swatch paper, it would have been uh, pretty opaque compared to the other ones, but definitely could be watered down quite a bit and still be potent. <laughs> and it had a little bit less spread than the other colors, at least on my swatch. I didn't actually use a ton of that Prussian blue in my paintings. Um, mostly I went with the ultramarine, so probably I'll have to do another painting in a future video with using more of that Prussian blue. It's really a gorgeous color though. And so I had let some things dry. I'm going back in for some of my final layers, adding in more leaf details, more flower details, but still keeping it loose overall. But there's definitely a lot of layers going on here. And I'm going in with my smaller brush now and adding some shadows into the green underneath the flowers. And some hints of stems and leaves and things like that. I wanted to also fill in a little bit around my flowers so that it's not just white in the background. And so I'm just kind of working in that area a bit and then also adding some darker details up to the top. And it's funny because Normally, on my channel, I do sort of abstracty, watery, you know, blobs on my paper and doodles. And, of course, I choose, like, flower scenes for my, <laughs> for my test paintings. If you like this style of painting, though, let me know and I can do some more of them. I'm still, you know, learning techniques and stuff, but that's what this channel's for. And for some stuff, we can learn together. I really enjoy painting in this style too. And it's something I'm slowly building confidence in. But 
But it's neat because, you, you know, these paints just made it easier to do. I'm not sure what my other palettes would have acted like. So that might be an idea for a future video, too, is to compare my palettes and do, you know, maybe the same painting using each palette and whatever matching colors I have. So, for instance, the yellow ochre on my Marie's palette. I can test it against the yellow ochre on my Mei Liang, my Mozart Comarabi. I think I've got some uh, Grumbacher student grade watercolors. And then I also have my original palette that I bought, <laughs> which has those, I think it's the Royal and Lang Nickel Essentials that I got um, as my first set of watercolor tubes. <laughs> and so... It'd be interesting to see how everything finishes and stacks up. But now here we are. Everything is dry and I've got a nice close up for you so you can see exactly how everything looks on the paper dry. And you can see those um, those gradients look great. You can see what I mean about that uh, Prussian blue there. It just kind of stayed put where it was that second from the left on the top and the circles came out beautifully. The lavender dried really nicely too. You can see the darker color I put in um, and my flower wall with the ivy and leaves and everything. And the colors are just very vibrant. So I hope you enjoyed this and until next time, keep creating.